Leicester City and PSR. To put it very simply, if I can, the Foxes were charged with breaching the rules when they were in the Premier League back in 22-23. But because they were relegated, they were able to argue that they weren't a Premier League club at the time, and so the rules didn't apply. Now, Stefan, there's obviously much more nuance to this. But firstly, what were your thoughts on this judgment? Well, look, it's surprising uh, to the extent that it appears, uh, as we sit here now, that they are outside of the jurisdiction of either the EFL or the Premier League. Uh, which instinctively doesn't feel right, uh, which is why we have the reactions that we've had from both the Premier League and uh, the EFL themselves. Um, But I think we should remember that the appeal panel, the appeal board that heard that case uh, was a very high-quality legal panel. Uh, You had a KC, and then you also had two former courts of appeal judges. So the idea that they came to their judgment on some sort of error or mistaken understanding of what were were effectively quite simple arguments, I think is wrong. And I think the Premier League's reaction uh, was a little disrespectful, actually, in respect of who had made that decision and the quality of the appeal board. Steve, just to come to you on this, because, of course, we know about the reaction of the Premier League. They've said that they were very disappointed about all this. But I want to ask you about the clubs in the EFL. You were a former CEO of one. Too. I mean, how disappointed will they be with this judgment, given that Leicester came down and then stormed straight back up, despite the fact they had these charges hanging over them? I think it's inevitable that clubs are going to be disappointed. Um, and don't forget, this isn't the first time that the, the EFL tried to um, capture them within their rules as well. Um, so, yes, clubs will be disappointed. Um, but this isn't the first time, and I think the EFL over the over the last few years have learned that the rules the rules have been in existence for a long time, and the rule book's been developed and evolved over time. The world's got more sophisticated. Football's b- become a much you know higher profile in, in certainly financially, and the rules are catching up. I think the EFL has done a good job from the le- the lessons they learned over the years, so such as clubs selling stadia. To, to allow them to comply and the, and the frustrations the clubs have with that. So it, I think it's it, the rules have been the rules. And, and as, as Stefan says, KCs and others have looked at these. I think what you need to do is to move on and quickly close these loopholes and make sure the rules going forward are fit for purpose. And, and all you can do is, is try and ensure that you've, you've looked forward and close as many of the doors as possible. But the legal profession are very good at finding those loopholes and uh, and probably earning quite a lot of money out of it. Is the easy fix for this, Stefan, that it comes under one jurisdiction? Because as you said there, Leicester seem to find themselves in this no-man's land between the EFL and the Premier League. Would that be the way that you go about fixing this? Uh, personally, I would fix it with um, some changes to the rules. I mean, I think the Premier League could have made some fairly simple changes to the definition of a club, uh, which was the biggest issue that the Premier League had in their rules. Uh, a club, as, as defined in the Premier League rules, does not include a team that had, had been relegated, which, you know, when we look at it in retrospect, seems crazy. Um, the EFL also has uh, a kind of catch-all rule at the end that effectively says if you are promoted or relegated out of the EFL, you are still obligated uh, to fulfil the rules until you have complied with all of our rules. So it captures you even beyond the relegation and the promotion whilst you still have obligations to that league. And the Premier League could have done that. I think to have a body that is trying to govern very complex financial rules in particular in respect of 92 clubs, I think is going to be a remit that's just too big. Um, and, it, and it would just give... You would end up having to spend an enormous amount of money to resource an organisation like that. So... In itself, I think that the leagues should be capable of regulating their own clubs. But clearly, simple loopholes need to be closed. And I think they will be closed quite quickly by the Premier League in particular in respect of the Leicester situation. So Leicester have survived this time around, but this might not be the end of the road for it because there are reports that they also have had a few issues with the 23-24 season. So could there be some punishments in the future for Leicester because of that? Yeah, so the, 
if you were to read the various uh, decisions that we've had in respect of Leicester throughout the season, because they had a, a challenge with the EFL in respect of the business plan that they needed to provide to them or refused to provide to them. Within that decision, both the EFL and also Leicester themselves uh, highlighted that they were likely to fail based on the forecast provided for 23-24 PSR. So as we sit here now, it is uh, likely that they're close. Uh, they ended up selling in the year uh, Harvey Barnes to Newcastle at the start of the year. Uh, we also know that they sold um, uh, Kieran Dewsbury Hall uh, right at the end of the period. And we also know they got the Maresca compensation. So they did have probably something like 70 to 90 million pounds of player trading type profits. That may have fixed their deficit for this year. But clearly, when you're relegated, you have a very big hit on the broadcast revenue, at least. So they may have been OK in terms of their match day revenue because they had more fixtures. So broadly, they would have been in line with the prior season. Uh, but broadcast, they will have taken a very substantial hit. And then it's a question of what they did commercially. So I think it's going to be borderline for 23-24. If they have failed PSR for 23-24, we know that that will be assessed under the expedited rules that are now in place uh, in the way that it was with Nottingham Forest. And they can expect uh, that to be heard in the second half of the season and any appeal to be carried out before the end of the season and any points deduction that flows from that to be in this season that we're now in. And, so, that, and that's the kind of punishment we, we're looking at would be a points deduction. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, so we know that their breach of 22-23 uh, was going to be £20 million, uh, £19.4 million by the time the Premier League had revised its numbers. That probably would have been, before mitigation, maybe six points. Um, so... You know, I think the range that you're looking at is is starting at three points deduction um, and then going up from there, depending on the scale of the breach. And then you have to look at the aggravating factors and the mitigating factors, as we did with the other cases, Nottingham Forest and Everton. Um, clearly, cooperation is the big mitigation that clubs can get. So the earlier you admit it and the more cooperation you give to the process, the more likely you are to get one, two, three points back of the penalty. Um, but we'll just have to see. Obviously, all of these cases are based on the facts of the individual case. But we do now have, from the Everton cases and from the Nottingham Forest cases, we do now have a feel for the sort of range of points penalties that are coming for breaches of PSR. Steve, just before we move on, uh, PSR and its current form, there are prospective changes on the way, but... Do you believe at the moment it is fit for purpose? The, the rules were put in place by the clubs and I think within reason it is fit for purpose, but people have clearly looked at how to game the system, play the system and work the system. That's not what the intention of clubs and putting the rules in place was for. So they're fit for purpose as far as clubs want to engage with them and, 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 and operate under them. Um, when you get the scenarios that the EFL had go back over the years and, and as, as now you're seeing, then those rules are tested and tested to the extent that they're found to be uh, short. But it's only by testing them and, and progressing them. What, what slightly concerns me is we, we inevitably are going to move to a new form of uh, regulation and, and looking at uh, percentage of turnover and salary cost management, whatever you want to describe it as. And what worries me is you then start with another set of rules and people will test those rules. So rules are only as good as the people that are operating under them, their desire to work within them. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.